Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our virtual Meet the Expert session. My name is Emma, and I am part of the My World of Work Live team with Skills Development Scotland. My World of Work Live is about helping you to understand what jobs Scotland is going to require in the future and to help you get the skills you will need for those jobs. Today, we're going to cover an overview of the early learning and childcare sector. I'm going to introduce you to our expert, Beth Beasley, and allow you the opportunity to ask any questions. I would encourage you to get involved as much as possible today, so please use the question and answer box, which will be at the bottom or the side of your screen. Um, and you can ask us as many questions as you would like as we go through our session today. If you're feeling a bit shy, don't worry, everything you ask today can be anonymous and you can select that option in the Q&A box. I'd just like to let you know that today's session is being recorded so that young people who could not make it today can still access the resources. The, record, the recording will be available for everyone to watch on the My World of Work Live playlist on the My World of Work YouTube channel. So before we meet today's expert, let's have a look at some of the labour market information around the early learning and childcare sector. There are currently 32,200 people employed in this sector. The average salary within the sector is around £24,000. And the workforce is expected to grow between 2020 and 2023 by 2.9% or the equivalent of 900 people. However, we're also looking at 3,100 replacement jobs. So those are jobs of people who are maybe retiring or leaving the sector for different reasons. So over the next three years, it's predicted that we'll need around 4,000, there will be around 4,000 jobs within the sector. As you may know, this week is Scottish Apprenticeship Week, eh, which is a great opportunity to celebrate apprenticeships in Scotland and to share the value they have for individuals, employers and the economy. As you can imagine, all the activity for the week this year is virtual, with people and businesses right across Scotland sharing photos, films and stories. So you can have a look at the other activity by searching hashtag ScottAppWeek21. Before we speak to Beth about her journey, I just want to highlight some of the pathways into the early learning and childcare sector. So if you're still in school in S5 or S6, you can um, apply for a foundation apprenticeship and that will offer you the chance to gain work experience and an industry led qualification. The foundation apprenticeship prepares you for a wide range of different early learning and childcare roles, including um, a nanny, or a nursery worker, or even a childminder. You will also learn to organise fun activities as a play worker to help children build their self-esteem or give children and their families vital support as a care worker. Completing a foundation apprenticeship can fast track you into a modern apprenticeship and counts towards entry into all colleges and universities. Then we move on to a support worker. So this is potentially somebody that you would find in the nursery. These courses will take around 12 months to complete and you've got the option of doing an NC in early education and childcare, which has a, is an SCQF level six and a level six is the equivalent of a higher. Or you can go on to do the SVQ in social services. Again, it's a level six or a modern apprenticeship. If you're looking to become a practitioner, uh, again, they usually take around 12 months to complete and to become a practitioner, you would need to complete an HNC in childhood practice um, and that's an SCQF level seven and that's the equivalent of an advanced hire. Or you could go on to do the SVQ in social services, children and young people. If you're really interested in becoming a senior or a lead practitioner or a manager, you can do your graduate apprenticeship um, and that's our expert Beth today. She is doing her graduate apprenticeship, so we will um, talk to her about her experiences. Or you could go to do a BA honours degree in childhood practice, which is a four year course, or a BA degree in childhood practice, practice which is a three year course. OK, so I'm going to introduce you to Beth Beasley, our graduate apprentice and our expert for today. 
Um, a little bit of an introduction to her. She is a graduate apprentice, which means she is currently working at a nursery, but is also a student at the University of the Highlands and Islands. Um, she's actually had many different jobs, and um, probably the coolest one being working at a PGL camp. So PGL camp is like an outward bound um, activity centre, so you get to do loads of cool things. Uh, and she enjoys being outside, cycling, wild swimming, a bit cold, and taking her dog for a walk. OK, so Beth, we are going to start with a few questions for yourself. It's lovely and thank you very much for joining us today. It's lovely to be here, thank you. <laughs> Could you just tell us a bit about your graduate apprenticeship? So, for example, how, how often do you have to go to university and what's the breakup of it? Do you have to do it every week or, you know, what, what's your experience been so far? OK, so my for my um, degree that I'm doing, it's a full time degree, um, which means that it's the equivalent of about 30 to 40 hours of study each week. Um, and I get I'm working four days a week and I get one day study leave um, to um, to do the, the degree um, that I'm studying towards. Um, it's quite intense because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having to squeeze in a full time degree alongside of nearly a full time job as well. Um, but um, it's yeah, it's it's hard work, but it's very enjoyable. Um, and it sounds it's really hard work. It <laughs> sounds like you have a lot to manage. Do you get much time off during your working day to do any of your university work, or do you mainly have to do it in your own time? No, I, I, I'm working when I'm at work. I'm actually doing the job of, a, of an, a, an early childhood practitioner. So no, it's just in my own time. And then, the, as I say, the, the day that I get um, from off the floor to do my studying, but. I'm very grateful to have that day because I know um, I'm working with other colleagues who are having to study towards um, the BA in childhood practice, but they don't get they're, they're not as fortunate as me to get time off. So they're having to do all of it in their own time. Okay, gosh, that's quite a lot. Um, and we mentioned that you're with the University of Highlands and Islands. Mm -hmm. um, do you have to be living within that vicinity? You know, do you have to go to the uni or is it virtual or how does it work? No, my degree is is, is fully online, so there's no face to face teaching whatsoever. So really um, you can be well, I mean, the, the graduate, the, the year that I started, which was 2019, we've got a whole spectrum of people spread across Scotland um, taking part in the degree. So yeah, you don't need to be close to a, an actual um, yeah, um, venue at all. And I think, am I right in saying it's the UHI and the UWS, the University of the West of Scotland? I think they're, they're two providers that I know of that are doing this graduate apprenticeship. So I assume, and that's not because of COVID, is it, that it's gone virtual? It was designed that way. It, it was always meant to be online, yeah. OK, great, that's good to know. Um, so what made you get into the early learning and childcare sector? Um, well, as you, as you mentioned, um, I worked for PGL uh, many, many years ago um, and really enjoyed it. Um, just working with children is really re re rewarding. Um, and then so from that, I went on and had several other jobs working in schools, um, working with children with additional support needs and things like that. Um, uh, and then I was unfortunate that I was made redundant twice in the space of one year. So I was looking for um, a, you know, a new job and the opportunity came up to take part in this graduate apprentice. And I saw it as a, a fantastic opportunity to gain a further qualification, but also to, you know, to get a job as well. But um, I was at that point because I had the, the two um, redundancies I was I was wanting to find something that was going to give me a bit of um, insurance in terms of you know protection in terms of you know a, a job that was going to stay <laughs> that I wasn't going to get yeah. made redundant <laughs> from again. Um. That's good yeah and on, and on that um, I suppose you know I, I was in terms of moving forward obviously we've had the expansion of hours from the Scottish Government in terms of um, early learning uh, in childcare and do you see that as being quite you know you feel that your job is quite secure moving forward? 
Certainly, yes. I mean, because the Scottish Government have committed to increasing the number of childcare hours that are available to each family across Scotland. Um, so within that, there is, as you, as you mentioned at the start, there's going to be more, there will be a great, an addition, an addition to the workforce to be able to facilitate that. Um, so yes, it, I, I very much felt that it was um, a good career move to make because it's a, an area that's expanding as opposed to contracting. That's great. Um, so I've got a few questions coming in here. Um, just a question about, um, could you maybe give us a little bit of an insight into the different roles in the nursery? So obviously I mentioned there in the introduction about a support worker, a practitioner and a senior practitioner, but would you be able to maybe just give us a little bit of information about what each of those roles do? Uh -huh, certainly. So um, the, we have at our nursery, we've got play workers who come in and they provide a support role. Um, as the name suggests, they, you know, they, they are there to play with children, but they will also help to um, deliver lunches and um, particularly at the moment, when, you know, there's an awful lot of cleaning involved um, um, due to COVID. So a play worker would assist with that. Um, we have um, uh, yeah, the uh, early childhood practitioner, as I am, our senior childhood practitioners. Um, uh, an early childhood practitioner is responsible for just everything that happens to a child whilst they're at nursery. Um, so it's um, welcoming, welcoming them in in the morning and then providing them with a, um, a range of activities that could be um, creative, sort of like arts and craft activities. Um, it might be something like baking, um, taking them out on an outing, um, supporting them whilst they're um, playing outside. Just um, whatever, I mean, most nurseries tend to have a, a free flow um, approach to play. So you'll have lots of different areas within the nursery that the children can go to. And your job as a, an early childhood practitioner is just to support the children in those different areas and to try and encourage as many opportunities for learning within you know, the, the, the activities that the children are engaging in. Um, Sorry, I think I've gone off track here a bit. So, the, yeah, I mean, the m majority of the roles within um, a nursery setting will be similar um, because, you know, you, the main focus is supporting the children. Um, but obviously, if you have a senior role, then you've got more of a, a managerial um, responsibility in terms of supporting the staff who are working there. Um, OK, yeah. that's good. Fair. And I've got a quick question here. Um, what tasks do you have to do day to day? Well, as I mentioned, um, you know, the, 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 the main focus is providing children with, um, you know, a, a variety of activities that they can engage with to encourage their, um, um, you know, the, the opportunities to learn. Um, it, it's all very play based in a nursery. Um, so it's, it's less formal than it will be for a child who's in primary one. But you're looking to see how you can extend learning from the play activities that children are engaged in. So we'll watch what children are doing if they're playing in the construction area and they're, they're building a tower. Then you're trying to just talk to them just to see if you can just, you know, further extend that learning just a little bit more. Um, and yeah, just I mean, <laughs> But a lot of it is it feels very much fun. It, it doesn't feel um, it doesn't feel formal like education in school. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great fun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Um, just a question um, that somebody's put in about they've heard of, you know, like an outdoor, I think it's a forest school that they're called. Uh -huh, I'm yes. wondering if you've ever had any experience of that or how, you know, in terms of working outdoors, you know, how that works or... Yeah, I haven't um, worked in a, a forest school myself. I'd very much like to have the opportunity to do that. I think it's a, a wonderful way of um, supporting children. And I think um, it's, it's really just a nursery that's been taken and is just, you know, everything's delivered outside, um, you know, no matter what the weather. Um, then the idea behind that is that children just learn so much from being outside. There are so many different opportunities for them to um experience, I don't know, um, you know, to, to just to, to see the, the natural world and to, to learn from that. Excellent. And, and the nursery that you're currently working in, are you, you know, do they have the opportunity to be outside or are you mainly within a building? 
we're within a building, but um, as I say, it's, it's free flow play. So children are always allowed to go inside, outside. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of different activities on um, out, on offer outside for them to engage with. And, and as I'm saying about the forest school, we would encourage our children to be outside no matter what the weather. It's not like, oh, it's a cold, wet day. We'll stay inside. We just put waterproofs on and we're out and we're doing stuff, particularly at the moment um, in terms of trying to make sure that um, we're keeping everybody safe. We are taking children out on trips um, every day so that we can um, spread the numbers um, and keep you know people safe. So um, this week I've been on three adventures, um, taking children to our local park um, for walks. Um, and uh, yeah, the high point of that, I think, was rolling down a hill with them. <laughs> That sounds like great fun. It, it was great fun, yeah. I was very muddy at the end of it. Yeah, I can imagine. I hope you get your waterproofs on too. I did. <laughs> and there has been a question actually about that, about whether COVID-19 has affected your job and if so, how it's affected your job. Yeah, it has in terms of we're just having to be very vigilant about the cleaning um, side of things as, as everybody. Um, so, I mean, there always is a, a certain degree of cleaning that you are expected to do in the role of a, you know, an early childhood practitioner or within a nursery. Um, but we've had to, you know, um, increase that to, um, in order to protect everybody. So, yes, it, th there has been a change. And yes, we are doing more cleaning, but we're still able to um, offer the children a really, you know, a, um, rich um, experience of play within, you know, right. within COVID. Um, okay, really good question. What skills are most important for your job? I, it, it's really important to be a, a person-centred, um, you know, a, well, to have people skills. Um, you really need to be able to communicate with the children, obviously, themselves, um, but also with their families and with the other staff that you're working with. So, um, yeah, you 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 want to you, you want to enjoy people's company and to have a certain degree of confidence in um, being able to communicate with others. Um, also, um, I, th I think just being able to have fun because children children are having fun and you need to be able to you know um understand where they are coming from and what to, in, in in terms of what they want to experience so yeah um a degree of fun is um yeah really important um you need to be fairly creative as well because we you need to be coming up with activities as i say to extend their learning so um being able to see where a, a child or a group of children are, are, are engaged in play and, and seeing an opportunity to try and encourage to, you know, to, to pull that out a bit and give them more opportunities to develop that learning potential. Mm. I imagine you might have to be quite patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, patience. Yes, yes. Yeah, that is required. Um, OK, and a question. What subjects, are there any subjects that you would recommend um, people do at school? and able to access the sector? Yeah, um, I, I don't know that there are any particular subjects that would be um, more or less relevant for it. I think, as I say, the, the, the people side of skill, the people skills side of it is, is the really, I think, uh, one of the most important things. I think you need to have a certain degree of, of organisation skills. Um, yeah, but I, I, I don't know that there are any subjects that would really lend themselves more to being um, in the, the in an early years setting. Is there any subjects that you would perhaps definitely be needed, you know, definitely be required to have? Not that I'm aware of, no. I don't, I don't think that there are any yeah, particular um, subjects that, are, you know, are, are more relevant than others. I suppose, um, about English and maths, I think might you require some a basic level of English and maths? Yes, sorry, yeah, a, a, a basic level of English and maths. Yes, definitely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. Um, and what are the most enjoyable parts of your job? Um, well, as I say, just playing with the children and just having fun. Um, yeah, um, it's yeah that that is incredibly re rewarding, and the you know when you're working with children, it, it can be the smallest thing that just gives them this sort of like 
I don't know, spark of joy. So, you know, for a small child, a small child who is what, say three years old, just managing to do their own bottom up on their coat and that sense of achievement that they get from doing that is just, yeah, it's um, it's rather special. Um, this week at nursery, um, I have been invited on a sleepover um, by a four year old. <laughs> Uh, and he said to me that um, yeah I could I could come for a sleep a sleepover once COVID is over because he was aware that COVID was would mean that we weren't allowed to do that and that um, I would be able to do makeup with his mum. <laughs> That's lovely. What yeah. brilliant! That's your uh, post lockdown Friday night sorted then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and what about the challenging aspects of your job? What would you say is the most challenging part of your of your job? Um, I think. So there's a, a certain amount of paperwork that's required um, in the role of a, an early childhood practitioner and it can be, yeah, it can be a bit of a challenge to find the time within your day to make sure that you are maintaining the records as they are needed to. Um, and then also the another sort of challenging side of it can be if you are supporting a child or a group of children that have um, additional support um, needs. Um, but although that can be a challenge, I personally find that that's often the chance to have the most reward uh, from the job, because if you can support a child who is, you know, having difficulties for whatever reason to engage in the nursery and, you know, see them develop, then that really is quite, um, it may, really makes you feel like you're making a difference. That's good. Um, so just back a wee bit to the discussion we were having earlier around um, university. So obviously you said you are doing a full time um, degree mm -hmm. as well as working more or less full time. Um, but do you have to go to university or college? To be an early childhood practitioner? Mm -hmm. No, no. Um, as you as you mentioned earlier, I think, Emma, that, you know, you can do an HNC or an HND. Um, so um well sorry yeah you'd need to go to college to do that um yeah you don't have to have a degree as i uh, as i'm learning uh, as i'm studying towards but i think that the ambition of the scottish government is that they would like to upskill the workforce um and in the same way that teachers are expected to be degree level trained i think it's the ambition that uh, you know those working in the early learning sector will also be degree level trained to reflect the 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 importance of a child's early years in determining their future life chances so I think that the more knowledge that you have um, about child um, childhood development and the sort of like theoretical perspectives behind um, ideas um, about children's learning the better placed you are to support children and therefore increase their um, potential in life. Great. So can you, uh, we mentioned earlier that you can do, obviously you're doing your graduate apprentice, there is a modern apprentice and a foundation apprentice. So it was just somebody was asking, you know, what apprenticeships are available, but we do have a full suite there of apprenticeships that are available. You might be able to answer this question about how do you access the apprenticeships? Um, I think just if you were to go to your local college, you would be able to have a discussion uh, with, um, you know, the college about them. Um, I would also recommend speaking to people at Skills Development Scotland. <laughs> I myself have used, uh, you know, um, careers advisors at Skills Development Scotland to, you know, get advice about qualifications, you know, that might be needed and things like that. Great. Um, we've got a really good question. Would volunteering at youth clubs or scouts, etc., help get me into this sector? Definitely, yeah. And I think that that would be a really good way to test if this is the right, you know, um, career path for you. I think if you if you're engaged in something like um, scouts or yeah, um, yeah, well, I just can't remember what the other thing was that you just mentioned there, but yeah, yeah that that would be a really valuable um, experience to have to yeah to. To, to, to road test whether or not this is something that you enjoy and certainly yeah from um, if you were wanting to apply for a course um, I think that that would stand you in really good stead um, to um, to be taken on. Um, I actually I, I don't think I mentioned this but I was a volunteer scout leader for four years and I think that that was um, that helped me in my application for this role as well just to demonstrate that I'd got that um, experience. I think 
yeah so yes most definitely that's good, that's good. Uh, what is the pay like so we mentioned earlier that the average wage is about twenty four thousand pound now obviously that I assume that as you work up through your career, that will probably, you know, increase as you take on more responsibility. Would that be about right? Yeah, certainly. I mean, for the role that I'm in, an early childhood practitioner, the starting wage, I think obviously it depends on the local authority, but um, it's uh, sort of like just over 22,000 to about 25 and a half for an early childhood practitioner. And then once you um, become a senior practitioner, I, I think it's from about 25 and a half to 28 and a half. Um, and then beyond that, you have a principal ECP, which is um, quite a you know a degree of management um, responsibility. And I think that's around 28 to 32,000 pounds. So we've got a sort of relevant question in terms of um, are there good career opportunities within the sector? You know, are there the opportunities to to move up the ladder? Yeah, certainly. As I say, so that the the, the, the jobs that I've just described there are, are you know a, a clear um, career pr um, path that you can do if you wish to develop. The further that you progress along that ladder, the more responsibility obviously that you have. Um, I would say that also the less face to face work you would be having with children themselves. So um, certainly our um, principal um, ECP is very much um, a, an office based job that she has. I mean, she does get to spend some time with children normally outside of COVID, unfortunately, at the moment because of our bubbles, she has to be very careful. But yeah, um, the further you progress, I think the less um, face to face with children you would have. But yes, you would get more money. <laughs> <laughs> um, and can males do this job? Absolutely. And I think that we need we need more men um, coming into the profession because there needs to be um, a, a, an, an equality in terms of, you know, our, the children in our nursery are, you know, boys and girls and they need that male mole. <laughs> Male role model, not a male mole model. <laughs> a male role model. <laughs> so yeah, no, definitely. And yeah, I think um it, I think I think it would be really beneficial to the children to have more men in the sector. Great. Um I've got a question here that's come in. Um somebody's interested. Do you work with children that need additional support? Yes, yes, certainly. Um, I mean, most nurseries will be, um, you know, inclusive, so they'll have a, a you know, a, a broad range of different abilities within the nursery. And yes, there, there most certainly will be children who have additional support needs. Um, but as I was mentioning earlier, you know, that that can be yeah, a really rewarding thing to do to, you know, to support children who maybe have, you know, some more challenges in their lives. Great. Um, another question kind of related to what we were talking about there in terms of um, career progression, but do you have to keep learning and completing professional qualifications? Yes, um, as um, an early childhood practitioner, you will need to register with the Sco uh, Scottish Social Services Council. And as part of your registration, you um, make a commitment to um, a minimum, I think, of 30 hours of um, continued professional development each year. So, yes, you do. But, you know, um, as with many jobs, you know, the, the um, research behind um, the early years is, is constantly evolving. And so it's important that you keep up to speed with the latest um, understanding of how children develop and learn. And it's, it's actually yeah. it's very interesting anyway. It's not exactly, you know, it's, it's not um, it's not boring. It is very um, good to, to, you know, to, to understand the, the most relevant way of supporting the children that you're working with. Um, do you like, do you enjoy your job? I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but I'll, I'll ask the question. Yeah, I love it. And I and I think that, yeah, I mean, all jobs have difficult days and difficult things about it. But as I, as I said earlier, there are so many just tiny little things that happen that just, you know, just, I don't know, fill you with wonder and joy. You know, being with small children, um, it, it, it's an honour, really. It's, you know, they, they are amazing and they are the you know that they are the people who in you know 10 15 years time are going to be you know 
in the workplace and you know responsible for our uh, future so you know it's really important that we look after them and give them as many opportunities and encourage them to to find what makes them um you know tick and you know so that they can go in the right direction that they want to um, an interesting question here around do you have to um, do sort of additional learning? So you mentioned there about learning in terms of like their maybe understanding like cognitive function or, you know, how children learn. But things like um, somebody's asked about first aid. Yes. Um, now, um, you wouldn't have to have first aid in order to be able to apply to go on one of the courses. Um, but obviously within a nursery setting, there will have to be people who have first aid training. Um, but usually a setting will decide, you know, who they send for that training so that they, you know, they've got the correct number of first aiders to the number of children that they have. So they've got, the, you know, the right ratio. Um, I myself, I'm not a first aider in our setting, but we do have other people who are. OK, that's good to know. Um, just another couple of questions. Are there any other advantages of working in the early learning and childcare sector? Yes, there are. Well, there are lots. I mean, apart from just, yes, it being wonderful working with children, um, depending on the contracts that you have, you might be term time uh, and in which case then you would have lovely extended holidays <laughs> <laughs> i don't have yeah, that's term, time, term time contracts but yeah i know people do too and they love that <laughs> that sounds good um and who influenced you the most to start a career in this field I don't know that there was any one person really i think it was more as i as i've mentioned that i've just i've had lots of different jobs working with children in the past and i've just i've really enjoyed them um and yeah th this opportunity just came along at the right time in, in my life um and so i just went for it um yeah so th there wasn't one particular person although you know throughout the course of my my career um i have met an you know an awful lot of um wonderful people so yes <laughs> Would you recommend the sector to you know the young people of today? Absolutely, um, and I, I, it's like I was just mentioning that the, the the young children of today are, you know, they are so important, and we need to look after them and give them all the opportunities that they possibly can to, yeah, become the people that they are going to be. Um, so yes, yeah. And one final question for you, Beth. Um, if you could go back and speak to your 14 year old self, what piece of advice would you would you give yourself? Find something that you enjoy and yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, I think I think you, you, somebody, somebody had asked earlier about having experience um, at Scouts or, you know, an after school club or something like that. I think try things, you know, go, go and try different um you know, part time jobs or volunteer and just find out what you really enjoy and try and make a career of that, because if you have a job that you enjoy, it will be so much easier than a, a job that you're not enjoying. <laughs> yeah, that is great advice. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think that's a really good, good um, place to end. So, um, thank you very much, Beth, for joining us today. We've really, I've really enjoyed it and really got a really good insight into your role and the um, sector. So thanks. Um, I hope everybody listening found it interesting as well. Um, if you need in information, advice or guidance on anything to do with careers, um, feel free to speak to your school careers advisor. Um, and you can also find out more at um, my World of Work, which is www.myworldofwork.co.uk and you can have a look on there for um, job, pro job profiles. You don't have to register, although hopefully you would um, go on to do that. Um, you can, it will help you make choices about your future um, and hopefully give you some inspiration as well to what you might be able to do. Um, as mentioned earlier, this video, along with our other expert sessions, will be added to the My World of Work YouTube channel under the My World of Work Live playlist. 
and um, hopefully Lindsay's just going to pop a few things in the uh, the, the Q&A box here for you around future websites that you might want to go and have a look at so for further information on this particular sector you can check out earlyyearsscotland.org or childcarecareerscotland.scot and that will give you lots of information about the early learning and childcare sector. You can also check out apprenticeships.scot and use the hashtag scottappweek21 um, for more information on all things apprenticeships. Um, we have lots more of these sessions planned, so please check them out and see if any of them are of interest to you. Finally, I just want to say thanks again to Beth and thanks to you for joining the session today. Um, take care and have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.